So today we're in Windsor and yesterday we're in London on Carnaby Street where I popped in to the Casio G-Shop out there and picked up one of their new carbon core guard watches. Now this particular model is the GA2000 1A9ER. It has the Casio 5590 module in it. Now guys, you know that normally I specialize on mechanical watches, 19th century pocket watches, and we got some motorcycles coming by here. We got some noise here. So I'm gonna try and compete with the motorcycles in Windsor. Normally I do pocket watches and automatic watches, but guys, this, with this watch, I'm gonna do the full watchmaker's review. We're gonna put it straight in the pressure testing tank and we're gonna have a lot of fun with this watch. So, let's get on with the video. Okay, so we have now pumped up to 50 meters worth of air pressure inside the air pocket that you can see at the top there. Now, if there is any uh, compromise to the waterproofing around the movement, then the air pressure inside the watch itself will also be at um, 50 meters worth of water pressure there so what we're going to do now is drop the watch into the water so just going to do that now so the watch now is pretty much fully immersed in the water and what we're going to do is as gently as we can um, and sometimes that's a little bit tricky release the air pressure from the top now if the pressure inside the watch is um uh, at 50 meters worth it's a lot more than atmospheric pressure and you'll see a lot of bubbles coming out very quickly under pressure and uh, because you know there's quite a cavity inside the watch there you know that would go on um there'd be a sustained number of bubbles there may be a few bubbles that come out particularly around the pushers because we may have got some air trapped just inside the the pusher area itself um so because there's cavities around there that doesn't actually go through into the center of the watch so as we release the air pressure we would expect to see you know some bubbles coming out from those pushers but we, we wouldn't expect to see any dramatic surge of bubbles or a sustained bubbles um, coming out once the air pressure has been released. So, so let's as gently as we may now just release the air pressure from above. Okay, and as you can see, we did have some trapped air in the uh, pushers but there is no, I don't think, let's just check, check around here, just spin around here and check around here. Okay, so a little bit of trapped air in the pusher cavities, but the watch is looking watertight to 50 meters. So that's good. That is a pass, but you'd expect that because it's rated down to 200. But, you know, um, very few people go down to 50 meters. So I think this is a really, really good uh, waterproofing test. OK, so we are now back in Pembroke Dock at the watch bench. And before I went up to London, I was actually working on this little pocket watch um, and I didn't get quite time to finish it. There's still a few bits there, as you can see, but actually I've kind of left it here because it's useful for me to explain something about this G-Shock Carbon Core Guard watch that we're looking at today. 
Okay, so here's the thing. This pocket watch was made in the late 1890s. This chronograph was made in about 1957, I'd say, by looking at it. Now, this pocket watch has as many, many, many watches have had since and before the subdial for the minute at the six o'clock position. Now, that is as much for technical reasons that I won't go into now as it is for aesthetic reasons. But as you can see, on the Casio G-Shock carbon core guard model we've got here, we have got exactly the same thing. So this is nice, traditional, elegant design. It's also good for the brain because the brain expects to see it there. Okay, likewise with the date window. Okay, now it's in time mode at the moment. So um, we're just getting the time here. But if we were to push this button here, which is the C button, as I remember, um, that will push us on and give us the date there and the day. So, you know, many, many watches have got the date window here. And if it was a three dial chronograph, then the third dial would be here. So in terms of classic design here, you know, Rolex Daytona, um, uh, pocket watch, uh, the dial design is extremely elegant, really, really good job in my view a fusion of modern 3d design and uh, bringing in the traditional elements for a watch dial which just helps the brain go instantly to the part of the dial to look for the information that it needs okay now just dealing then quickly with the chronograph this, as I say, is a 1950s chronograph. It's got two pushers. The one at the top you use to start and stop the chronograph and the one at the bottom you use to reset it. Now, okay, they're the other way round on this, but nevertheless, we've got the two pushers for the chronograph in the two o'clock and four o'clock position. So again, from Casio, this is a nice nod to the past so in summary in terms of dial design i think this is a really really excellent job by the guys at g-shop i actually really really love this because when i look at it i just know instantly where stuff is um and it's classic and it's a good job we really really like that so uh let's move on okay so there are a couple of things about the way in which the dial has been implemented that are worth mentioning and one that you can see here on the minute hand the counterbalance is black so that when it is opposite to the hour hand you can see actually it covers the hour hand there um, and at the moment um, it's not as bad as it can get when they are 180 degrees apart um, you only see you know, about half of the hour hand. And I think that that is, is probably not ideal. Um, the hour hand is only a skeleton hand as it is. So, you know, the visibility of the hour hand is basically affected by the counterbalance of the minute hand. And I, th and I think that's probably not a brilliant thing. Um, then we have a slightly bigger issue. Um, and that is, and I've kind of deliberately done it here, um, and that is how you can, how well you can see the LCD display. So we've got two, we've got one for the seconds and we've got one in, you know, what I referred to as the date window. Now, as long as you catch the light right, it, they're really, really clear. Um, but you do have to catch the light right. Uh, you can't just look straight down at the watch and see them there. So if, for example, I try and do this now, where we, you can see there's a, that's a little bit better on the, on, you can see the seconds now rendering um, are much clearer uh, than when there's any shadow and they'll disappear. You kind of need the light coming from a certain angle to see them. And these of course are the LCD, which are the light figures on the dark background. Some of the versions of this watch have the dark figures on the light background. And I think those are probably uh, a little bit easier to see. Um, but it is important because, you know, this is key information. Um, and if they're at all in shadow like that, 
you won't see them. Um, you need the light from a certain direction. So in shadow and the light in a certain direction. Okay, so just coming in nice and close on the dial now, um, as you would expect from Casio, who have been doing this for quite a long time, um, everything is looking good in here in terms of, you know, accuracy and cleanliness and all that kind of stuff. Um, the wheel that you can see there in the middle, that is the one that spins round when you push the mode button and uh, the little indicator on the left hand side there points to which mode you're in, which for a watch with a lot of features like this is actually really, really helpful. So that's good. Um, but the quality here inside, I think is really, really mm -hmm. good. One thing that's quite interesting actually is just if we can just see it here again, it's just the, um, yeah, you can just see there the resolution, if I can get it in focus, hang on. The resolution used on the LCD display. Okay, so you've probably got, um, well, you've actually got like each, each digit is made out of 15 squares. You know, it's not a very high resolution, but it's amazing what can be achieved, um, you know, at a few feet distance because it looks really crisp when you look at it from um, further out. But in summary, um, I think the quality, uh, let's just take a look at these nice knurled, uh, yeah. So these are the pushers with this nice sort of kind of knurling on them. Um, this is where you saw the bubbles come out uh, on the water test um, because of the trapped air just between that and uh, where the waterproofing resides going into the case. So you know, I think this is a good job, this. Um, uh, other than the small points that I've mentioned, um, yeah, uh, this is a good, clean, nice quality case, uh, which we're now going to open up and have a look inside. Okay, just turning quickly to look at the strap. The strap, um, you know, goes well with this particular design of watch. It's very comfortable. It has a lot of um, uh, adjustment holes there, so you can make it fit your wrist um, exactly, which is great. And it also has, as I'm just putting in the middle of the frame there, a quick release mechanism. Uh, let me just show you that close up. And there it is close up. You basically got a little uh, bar that you push aside there and that will take the strap straight off. Uh, and the important thing is it's nicely recessed there so it doesn't accidentally happen because if it did, the watch would fall off, which wouldn't be hugely useful. Um, but that's good. Oh, also note um, that the no special tool required to release the back here. It's just a very small fillip. So you just want to get one of those and you can take the back off. Okay, so I'm not going to show you completely how to use this watch because there's a very good set of instructions that come with it. But I just want to show you some of the things that um, you might, like me, really, really like. Okay, and the first one of those, and I mentioned it earlier, is the mode, how you change the mode of the watch. And um, if I can just come in here, uh, this is the mode wheel here. And you can see we've got... Um, five different modes. The one that's selected at the moment is the time mode. But if we push this little button here, which is the button um, marked C in the instructions, you can see that it turns around and <laughs> it's stuff like that that makes me feel like nine years old again. So that's really, really good, really like that. So you can see at any time, what mode you are currently in. So let's show you some other stuff. So we could go to, we could go to world time, for example, and then start looking through, you know, for another city that we're interested. Maybe you've got a girlfriend in, um, I think that's Delhi, right? Maybe you've got a girlfriend in Delhi and you wanna know that you can see the time there now is uh, 2041. But if we just go back to time mode, now we've set that right. We just go back to time mode. Okay. And now if we, um, we're, we're back in London, it is uh, 12 minutes past four, as you can see. But if I just press uh, the B button down, 
it'll swap <laughs> how cool is that okay don't get me wrong we love Jeje Lacoutre we love you know Rolex or we love Breguet um, but none of those watches that I just mentioned will do anything like that so that's now the time in Delhi so we want to go back to London just keep that pressed and I don't know what you think guys that is that is really cool I really like that as I say it makes me feel nine years old it's brilliant okay we love that um, when it's finished I'm going to show you some other stuff real quick <laughs> how cool is that so um, you'll notice that in a couple of minutes the minute hand will be obscuring the date window where it says 1613 there a quick way to get quick way to get them out of the way is just the, the bottom uh, pusher here at the bottom uh, in the instructions that's referred to as the L button because it also puts on the light a couple of quick presses just give that a couple of quick presses and it moves the hands out of the way and it basically goes to the it depends on where the hour hand is when you do it but it just basically shifts them out of the way and if you give it another couple of quick presses okay and that goes back so just before we finish up with these modes I'm just going to show you the alarm mode go into the alarm mode um, we're in alarm one there are five different alarms I think you can set and you can also set whether it beeps on the hour or not but what we're going to do now is just press the adjust button wait till um, set stops flashing and then we can uh, set the time for our alarm uh, and let's actually try and do this now so set it for what is the time the time is 4.20 two nearly so if I set it for 423 let's try that okay so we set it for 423 and the alarm is on okay so let's go back to the time mode and it's for and it should go off in a second now there we are now I don't know whether you can hear that. One of the other things that I've got a slight concern about is the loudness of that alarm. It's really not very loud. Um, and if you're a heavy sleeper, I just don't think it would probably wake you up. And just one last thing before we go on to look at how we can illuminate the dial when we're using the watch in uh, darkness. And that is to mention that the in reality of course the lcd display that you can see kind of um flickering there doesn't flicker in reality that's just um some interference between its uh sort of flashing rate and that of the um phone which is capturing the light so you won't see that when you buy um one of these watches so let's go and look at the loom so it's now night time and um, this is the bit where we get to uh, check out the loom on this watch and see how good that is so after three I'm going to turn off the light here we go one two three and uh, that is rubbish and that's because there isn't any loom but there is this oh that's nice so um okay uh as you can see there is a little led light uh, which backs lights the um, lcd display and is very very effective uh, the only drawback is you can either set it for one second or as i have set it here um three seconds but either of those as you can see is pretty short because i guess the designers are trying to preserve battery life but it's really too short to do anything other than uh, look at the time and anyway even at three seconds if you were to try and set the alarm as soon as you push one of the other uh, pushers it's going to turn the uh, light off okay so it's good look at that for reading the time 
but really that's the only thing it's good for um but it is it is you know it's a whole lot better than your normal loom if you just want to have a quick look at the time so that's pretty good okay to pop the back off you need a size a nor phillips screwdriver and i've just done that um the you can see here that there is some moisture um uh, inside this part of the watch um, it's actually 24 hours since I conducted the uh, water test um, but this is not alarming because you know this is just in between the case um, uh, the outer case and the inner case so you know that there, if you find moisture at this point um, I would not be alarmed about that but we're going to start to go further inside the watch now Okay, so down into the movement now, and I've taken one battery out, um, which you can see there. So uh, you're going to need the equivalent of an SR726W, or that actual uh, reference battery. Um, there are two of those in there, um, and there is a uh, some advice on the uh, lid that when you do a battery change that you should uh, touch the two batteries together for two seconds after. So I'm gonna do that. Um, that's probably to sort of kick them off together or something, no idea really, but um, there we are. Now you can see how the waterproofing um, is achieved. Uh, and we have got one gasket and it is a bespoke kind of gasket and it runs along inside this channel here. And the individual pushers, of course, um, will have a couple of O-rings on each of the pushers to make sure the water doesn't get in there either. So that's a look at the movement. It's it's a big movement. It's got a lot of features on it. It doesn't have any jewels, um, but then, you know, for a watch at this uh, price point, um, you wouldn't really expect them to be in there in a quartz movement anyway. Okay, so the watch, as you remember, is called Carbon Core Guard. Um, this is the bit that is being guarded, uh, which is the movement, uh, which, although it's a quartz movement, is still a delicate piece of engineering. And running all the way around it is this lump of carbon um, with the gasket to keep the waterproof proofing in there. Um, so... Yeah, uh, looking good. Um, I'm now going to put this back together and give my verdict on this watch by G-Shock. Hi guys. I guess this looks worryingly like an advertisement. Um, I've got my G-Shock bag. I've got my G-Shock box. Uh, it comes in a nice box with a nice tin inside it. I've even got my G-Shock hoodie. Um, so <laughs> the telltale signs are that I'm a bit of a convert to G-Shock. Now, here's the thing. I'm a watchmaker, an independent watchmaker. I don't have a boss. I can go out there and find whatever I like. And if I do a review and I like it, I can use my channel to tell you guys and not only tell you guys that I like it, but in detail, why I like it, okay? So on Saturday, when I visited the G-Shock shop, it was the second of two shops that I visited that day. Now, the first one was also a very positive experience, but it was very, very different. It was a very high-end shop, and a very nice lady there gave me a demonstration of a very, very beautiful Jeja Lecoutre watch. Now, you know, we love Jeja Lecoutre. I'm a watchmaker. You know, you've got to love Jeja Lecoutre. You've got to love A. Lang and Zona, uh, Bove, um, <sighs> Rolex. My next job is to replace the glass and do a service on this little day just. So, you know, we love all of that stuff, but the vibe is a bit different. You know, these are serious pieces. And in the high-end store, 
There's a big security guard on the gate and the vibe was quite hushed and serious. Now the thing is, when I went to the G-Shock store, now you're going to see a picture now appearing on the screen. Um, this is me in the store. On the left there is my man Deshaun and on the right um, is, is the boss man. That's Mikey. Now the thing about it is these guys showed so much enthusiasm for these pieces and the whole vibe in the store was was different it was fully young people looking at and buying these watches and so you know i said to deshaun i said look if i like the watch i'll wear the hoodie and do all that stuff um so there we are we like the watch but now i'm going to show you in detail why i like the watch so let's do that Okay, so it's time to sum up now on what we think of this watch from Casio, the G-Shock Carbon Core Guard. And uh, you can see the reference number for this particular version on the screen there in front of you. So I'm gonna deal with engineering and build quality. Uh, then I'm gonna look at uh, the looks and versatility of the watch versatility in terms of you know how many different places you can wear it and that that sort of thing um, and lastly we're going to look at value for money and then we'll give a, a total score you guys know this is the way that I, I tend to, to do it so let's look then at the engineering aspects of the watch and I'm going to start with the movement now everything's scored out of 10 and I've given the movement 8 out of 10 it's a very, very functional movement. It doesn't get 9 out of 10 because there are no jewels in there. And I strongly suspect that's because, you know, this movement is not really built to last. Uh, it's there to do a job, quite an interesting job that you can see for maybe five, seven years, something like that. But it's probably not meant to be that durable. Moving on to the case. The case is, you know, it's a good case. This this is the carbon core guard and it has got a carbon core guard. We've taken the watch apart and we've looked at it and we can see the implementation of that from Casio. So that scores a nine out of 10. The bracelet um, or strap, I should say, you know, it's, it's not brilliant, um, but it is comfortable. It suits the style of the watch and it has that nice quick release mechanism. So I've given it a seven. The dial and hands. Now, I really like, as I mentioned, the dial layout, but there are the one or two little things uh, about the dial, particularly the counterbalance that you can see there uh, painted in black and the way in which you really have to catch the light well and, you know, I set this video up with this light so you can see the LCD display there clearly, but you know, you have to do that. Um, it's not good in all lights. So it's a knack that you have to uh, acquire. So, so I've given that a seven out of 10 in summary. Turning to the features of the watch, you know, you, you saw me use the five modes there. I know it's a different market, but, you know, a Rolex Datejust will give you the time and the date. I mean, it'll do it, you know, with a certain amount of flair and style, but that's all you get. In this watch, you've got a stopwatch, you've got world time, you've got an alarm, you've got funky hands flying around the place. You know, this scores a 9 out of 10 for features. Um, maybe I should give it more, but I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The crystal, we've not talked much about the crystal. Um, I'm actually not completely sure what the specification is. If anyone knows, please write it in the comments. Um, it's clear, it's robust, and it's nicely recessed under the bezel. bezel and that will mean that it uh, takes less wear over time. So I'm going to give the crystal 7 out of 10. You know, it's, it's good, solid, and very clear, as you can see there. Now, turning to water resistance, well, you know, we gave it the pressure test. It passed. Um, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 
for no I can't do that really can I because I didn't take it down to 200 meters um, oh yes I can it's my video um, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 for water resistance guys you can go swimming with this watch you can go snorkeling with this watch um, probably not a good idea if you're welding the legs of an oil rig down at 60 meters or something like that um, to take this watch but apart from that you know this is a really really good water resistant uh, piece so that's the engineering uh, build quality and features um, now let's move on to the looks and versatility so here's the thing the watch looks great as long as you're doing something casual and sporty so you know you just cannot wear a uh, a black and yellow funky watch like this in all kinds of situations you know if you've got a dinner jacket on or a suit on or even a sports jacket even sort of pseudo smart um it's really not the watch to wear anything else you're, you're playing sport you you're on the beach um you got casual clothes on you know I, I i covered the dial design it's funky it looks cool um you know and that's what it is it's it's a fun watch it's it's you know it's for having a a good time and um becoming nine years old again and who, who doesn't want to do that really um so in terms of looks uh in terms of looks in those environments i you know i give it nine maybe ten out of ten but the problem is versatility it's not a versatile watch uh not like you know the submariner or something like that which you can wear pretty much with anything this watch, in terms of looks and versatility, scores a 7 out of 10. So finally, turning to value for money. Guys, I paid, I think, uh, 119 English pounds for this watch retail over the counter um, at the store there on Carnaby Street. 119 pounds for this watch and all that functionality. I think that is very very good value for money. So I'm gonna give it a solid nine out of 10. So that's all the scores. Let's find out what our total score for this watch is. Okay, so now I've actually worked that out. The engineering build quality and features comes to an impressive 8.1 out of 10. The looks and versatility is, as we've said, seven out of 10 and the value for money is nine out of 10, which brings the score for this Casio G-Shock Carbon Core Guard watch, which I got from Carnaby Street in London to 8.1 out of 10. So guys, you know, this is a resounding endorsement from me for this watch. Uh, a lot of guys that are into watches won't necessarily have even thought of G-Shock, you know, they'll have pushed it aside um, as a kind of frivolous thing. But, you know, this watch is about having fun. It's about the kind of enthusiasm that I found with the guys that were running the store there in Carnaby Street. Uh, my man, uh, Dershon, and Mikey, the boss man there, and you know their enthusiasm for these watches uh, was was really really good to see and that's because they're fun they're tough and they're useful and you know it's not right for every occasion but for what it is intended for this is a really really good watch guys if you like my videos then please subscribe i am constantly now making content uh, mainly because I really enjoy doing it. Uh, but I hope it's useful to you guys. I hope you enjoy it. So stay tuned. More of this uh, coming your way very soon. So please subscribe. And from Pembroke Dock, from the watch bench tonight, that's all I've got for you. God bless.